Morning everybody, I just thought I'd show you the update on the garden now that we're into May and everything's in bloom, or starting to be in bloom. Um, you can hear in the background the water feature I built. There's some goldfish in there but they hide. A little bit red and white goldfish in there but uh, the water feature is looking quite good. Uh, there's an acer here given to me by my friend James. Well, the sun, we had some really fierce sun the other day and I think it's burnt the leaves a little bit but not to worry. Acer, bamboo, some little bonsais that I've been trying to work on. There's a horse chestnut and a pyracantha. Beautiful acer there, given to me by a friend, Jill. And uh, more acers. Maple's coming out now, which is nice. Another red acer over there, and there's the kiln. Kiln's doing really well. Um, I've had a, um, I've had a, a biscuit firing in it and a glass firing. It was a slap problem with a glass firing, but uh, a modification will sort that. And uh, I'm just in the making process now for the next, the next um, batch of work. So, oops, sorry about that. Uh, so we'll just walk into the studio from the nice garden over here. It's a bit dark in here. I've had to pull the shade down because um, I've got a pot here. Let's get the custom to light. A large two-piece pot here joined about about there. That's drying, but obviously there's a very there's a very strong sunlight comes in through this during the during the day so uh, obviously it's going to dry the pot out so we have to just spin it through about 90 degrees every half an hour and keep the blind down until it's ready to be lifted off the wheel uh, okay and then just uh, just prep some clay here this is a new body of clay um, I'll just get you a uh, an example of what it's going to turn out like and I'm just going to show you throwing some bowls on uh, okay I've got the uh, got the bowl here take it in the sunlight see the the beautiful uh, pinhole in glaze I've been trying to get this for quite a while and I've just uh, discovered a clay that I can mix with my clay it gives me this really nice crawling and this beautiful sort of orange blush on the outside. So that was at the last firing of the kiln, the first firing of the kiln, I should say. That's quite a nice little bowl, faceted bowl. I'm just going to do some of these for you now. Um, do some for you now so you can see how we do them. Okay, it's a bit dark in here. Um, I have to apologise for that, but I've got to keep that blind foot blind closed until I can move that pot out of the sun. It's attached to the wheel head at the moment. It's a bit too soft at the base to, to lift off. Plus I've got to trim the base of it a little bit more. So uh, I'll have to put, the, put, the, put the, the fluorescent lighting on. Right, this is going to be a, a faceted bowl. This clay is, uh, it's not for it's not for um, throwing pots, it's for making pizza ovens. So it's not very nice to throw. Well, not, all, all clay is nice to throw, it just depends on how you deal with it. But it's not very easy to throw, it's not very forgiving. You can't undercut it very much, it uh, doesn't have any sort of integral strength. Things are sent to try us. I'm just lifting it up so we can get some facets cut on this. Get the wall of it even.
I normally keep the um, normally keep the walls of this vertical because it's easier to cut. But uh, it's just going to be a bowl. I found before when I when I cut it and then I stretch it out from a a vertical cylinder, the, the, the rims crack. Because I say it's not it's not for throwing throwing pots with this clay. I mix it with some of my clay. It's not all oven clay, but it's all a bit of a compromise. So I'm just slicing this off. I'll not touch the outside of this again. Also the cutting of the clay like this opens the particles and then you get that lovely pinholing effect that I showed you earlier. Okay, right, right, I've just got to throw it out now. I'm keeping my right hand here under the base just to protect it. It's just a question of teasing it out. already starting to bulge here because the, the body the, the clay doesn't want to help me. <laughs> you see how it's going there. It's going there. I quite like that. I quite like the like being on the edge of of it failing. Starting to sag here, but we'll work with that. Get the water out. Right, that's number one type of bowl. I'll just trim it off and get it off there. I was really surprised by the effect. I didn't. Ex well, I didn't know what was going to happen with this clay when it came out the came out the kiln. It doesn't. Um, I don't do very much any glaze tests, if any. That's one. Now I'll do another bowl that I did that, that came out really nicely. Unfortunately. It's sold at the weekend, so I can't show you. If you look on the Facebook page, um, if you look on the Facebook page, there's some photographs of it. But, uh, that came out really nice, but obviously the nice pots go very quickly. This isn't going to be faceted. This is just a, a straightforward bowl. Sounds like you can hear a, uh, a bird tweeting in the background. It's my seat. It broke the other day and it's squeaking. There you go. Drives the dog crazy. Keeps looking for birds. Out. 
two different types of ball, one faceted, one not. Both thrown with this new clay. If you check out the bottom in the description, there's a link to my Etsy shop and that bowl that I showed you earlier is for sale on the Etsy shop. Uh, give it a look, you don't have to buy anything, just uh, does well for my figures if you click on it. And there we have it. The latest, uh, what's happening in the garden, the kiln, pots, life in general making nice pots and then eventually trying to sell them. And I'll see you next time.